Today we are going to discuss why in India we use 50 Hz for electrical power while in US they are using 60 Hz but we use 50 Hz. Now one would answer normally because British was using 50 Hz that's why we also used same standard that is 50 Hz. Now question comes why British was using 50 Hz while in US it was 60 Hz. That's the real question. To understand this I would like to go to the little deeper roots of electricity originating point okay so that we'll understand not only this concept we'll understand lot many concepts very clearly so let us try to dive into those details if you go to the era of before Christ 4500 years before Christ they were using oil lamps for the artificial light okay so after 1500 years they got candles candles were invented okay to get the artificial light now, in 18th century, strictly speaking 1792, they got first gas light. So by using gas, by burning gas, they got light in this 1792. So till this, there is no electricity, okay, practically there is no electricity used. Though some people were experimenting on the electricity, but nothing come out, okay. So in the 19th century, in the beginning of 19th century, strictly 1800, so an Italian scientist has invented a battery at the time they were calling voltaic pile okay that is a DC battery by using a chemical process okay next in between 1800 and 1809 a scientist from Switzerland has used this battery to convert into light that is what carbon arc lamp so what he was doing is he used two electrodes he placed two electrodes and in between these two electrodes he applied very high voltage so that the gap, air gap in between these two electrodes as ionized and gives an electric arc that gives lighting. So that is the first electrical energy usage. He converted electrical energy into light energy by using arc. I'm just going to the details very quickly. Uh, yes, they are very important to understand 50 hertz and 60 hertz. Yeah were closely related. Next, in 1832, a British scientist, by using a DC voltage, he tried to convert that DC voltage to mechanical energy. Yes, he successfully did it, but there are many losses that uh, the, the design was not so efficient. Okay, so till this time, electricity only was DC, okay, by using batteries only, by using a chemical process. They got DC and that DC was used only for bulbs. Though they got a DC motor but there is, it, it can't be used practically anywhere because that design was not so good. Okay. Next in 1832 a French scientist has got a DC generator. So he converted mechanical energy into electrical energy. He produced output, electrical output. Okay. And surprisingly he first got a AC output, okay, but at that time there was no application of AC, he don't know how to use AC, okay, he don't know how to use alternating current. So he converted that AC to DC by using a commutator, okay. So here AC generator was accidentally invented first, but he don't know how to use that AC generator, so he converted that AC to DC by using a commutator, okay. Now, so this DC voltage, so far chemical energy was used to produce DC voltage that is used to give to bulbs. Now this DC generator was used to light up the bulbs, alright. And of course this was also not so efficient design, the design of DC generator is also not so efficient but he said mechanical energy can be converted into electrical energy through magnetic energy in the year 1832 in the same year. In 1855. A French scientist, for the first time, he used AC power. So till this time, before 1855, there is no application of AC. But in 1855, a French scientist has used, a neurologist, he has used this AC power source for electrotherapy. Okay, that is the first application of AC power. So moving on, in 1871, a French scientist named Grammy, he has practically developed the design DC motor. He developed 
DC motor, which can be used to the practical world. Okay. So he changed the rotor structure, he changed the armature structure. That armature is called as a Grammy ring armature or Grammy ring winding structure. Okay. So with that, he could efficiently turn the uh, motor by using electrical input. Okay. In 1873, a French scientist once again, another French scientist who is a friend of, who is a colleague of Grammy, he transmitted power for the first time. Careful here. See, till this, what we're talking about, we're talking about history, very beginning of electricity. Right now, we have light, fan, everything, but at that time, there was nothing. Okay, even they don't know till 1873, they don't know that electricity can be transmitted for a longer distances through wires. They don't know even that also. So in 1873, a French scientist has got an idea uh, of transmitting power from one place to another place for longer distances. So till this time, if they want to light up a bulb, they used to have a battery just below that and they used to light up the bulb. Okay. And this invention also is very interesting. I'll give you a story in the description. You can check that description story. Okay. This invention of transmitting power is very interesting story. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to that details. Next, in 1874, a Russian scientist has patented incandescent bulb. So, so far, the application of electricity is only arc lamps and DC motors. In 1874, he proposed, he patented incandescent bulb, but this incandescent bulb can't last for a longer time. It used to blow off within very short time, maybe within a few hours. Okay. Next, in 1880, an American scientist, I think all of you are aware of the name, yes, Thomas Alva Edison, he has given a practical incandescent lamp which can last for 1500 hours. Okay. This has brought some significant changes in the electricity. So this invention of bulb by Edison who is not just an inventor, he is also a businessman. So to let the customers, the consumers to use his inventions Customers need a power source, they need a power supply. Consumers don't have any electricity. So, he started building power plants. In 1882, in New York City, he first launched a commercial power plant so that people can use his inventions of incandescent bulbs. So, he started transmitting power. DC power, at, he generated at 110 volts. DC two wire. Okay, here why he has chosen one ton volts? Let's have a look at that. He intended to transmit. He intended to deliver hundred volts to the consumers. But he know to transmit power, he need to use he need to take use of wires. These wires are having some resistance, so the resistance will take away will take some drop. So he calculated that drop will be around ten percent. Okay, so ten percent of one ten volts is ten volts in the transmission line as lost. So he started transmitting one ten volts at the power plant. So. As more and more current is drawn by the load, more drop across the transmission line and less voltage here. If there is no current, if there is no load, zero ampere current, then complete 110 volts will appear here. If more current, then more drop. Then if more drop, bulbs will light down. Okay, they will not glow with a full intensity. So, uh, for this constraint, with this constraint, what he used to do is, he used to build a power plant for every one kilometer or so. For every one kilometer, he used to have one power plant, a special power plant, again corresponding loads, because this, this power plant cannot transmit for longer currents. If more currents, more drop will be there. Okay. 
Now, here comes a point, interesting point. Point here is to supply some x amount of watt, to supply x watt load, if you transmit power at low voltages, current will be high. If current is high, the losses, voltage drop is high because current is high, drop is high and losses are also high. Okay. Whether it is a DC or AC it is true, remember, whether it is DC or AC it is true, less voltage means more drop. So at that time there was no choice because till then nobody used to see the light, there is no light, there is no electricity, electricity means that's a wonder. Okay. So yes, there was no choice, Edison used to transmit power, though it is lost, yeah, people used to pay for it, let them pay. Okay. During this time, uh, they use steam engines to drive these generators, DC generators. Okay. But some inventors are not happy with this uh, power plant for every one kilometer because of high losses. So Edison has revised his transmission system to three wire transmission system, DC three wire transmission system by using 110 volts and another 110 volts total 220 volts he is to transmit using three wire DC system which has reduced losses to a considerable amount drop these voltage drop to a considerable amount but still he is to have a power plants at the regular intervals because this cannot reduce the losses to a much extent. So here the conclusion is Till 1883, okay, only DC power supply was there, only DC source was there, there is no other alternative for this, okay. So people had to accept the same, though they are having more losses in the system, okay. So Edison was ruling that time, he used to send his power, he was so happy because all the customers are seeing his electricity or using these his inventions elect incandescent bulbs. Next, in 1884, England scientists, two scientists, they invented concept called a transformer to change the voltage levels because they, they understood DC power system has no future because if you transmit power at lower voltages, it will have more losses to increase the voltage levels so they designed a transformer but these transformers will work only with AC not with DC. So they used AC power supply using a transformer they built a first AC transmission for the demonstration in Italy okay and they used 130 hertz frequency here. Careful, now we are coming to the track, that is the frequency term, 130 hertz frequency, single phase power supply. Okay, they used, they increased the voltage level to 2000 volts, that is 2 kilo volts. Now question is, why they chosen 130 hertz? The reason is very simple, because at that time, they are having only bulbs. Okay, so electricity was used only for lighting up the bulb and to turn the DC motor, okay. But as it is AC system, DC motor cannot be driven with the AC system. So this AC power is only to supply bulbs whether it is arc lamp or incandescent lamp. There was no AC at the time, there was no cooling fans, okay. There is no TV, there is nothing, okay. So bulbs, so if they are having, if they are supplying these bulbs with a lower frequency, means more time period, more time period means what will happen if time period is high then bulbs used to give a flicker, one could see the flicker of the bulbs. So to avoid this visible flicker they gone for higher frequencies, so they reduce this time period means frequency is high, so they come in, they just picked one, fre one higher frequencies, 130 hertz. Alright. At the time you remember there was nothing, no electricity, no fan, no bulb, no projector, no digital board, no nothing. Alright. Now, after 1884 successful transmitting of, successful demonstration of AC transmission, they built a commercial operative power plant in 1885. 
in Italy with same 2 kilovolts, but this time 120 hertz because they were keep on experimenting with the different frequencies. Okay, there was no standard frequency at the time. Till 1885, this AC power was only restricted to use to light up the bulbs, not for DC motors. But obviously one wanted DC motor also because motor is very important for industries. Okay, but there was no motor which, which can run with AC power supply at the time. In 1885, an Italian scientist has got an idea of AC motor by using polyphase, by using two phase, three phase like that. He just got an idea. He has not implemented, he just perceived an idea of it. Okay. Next, in the same year 1885, an American he is watching all this stuff here. All these Italy, Italy is you know uh, transmitting AC voltages successfully for longer distances. But in America, Edison, who was transmitting DC power supply, which is having more losses, so you need to keep power plants at regular intervals. So, another American, whose name is George, George Westinghouse, he saw a good opportunity in this AC, which was used in Italy. So, immediately what he did was, he just purchased the rights, North American rights of the transformer construction, he has taken the rights, from these England scientists. Then he tried to modify those transformers with, along with his team, that is William Stanley and other people. So they just modified the transformer within just three weeks, they modified the transformer, the design transformer here. And in 1886, George Westinghouse in US, in New York, he just launched AC transmission line with 133.33 hertz and it transmitted voltages at higher voltage that is 500 volts. At the consumer end, he stepped down the voltage to 100 volts which was giving less transmission line losses and transmission line drop. And in the end of 1886, he has successfully launched commercial AC transmission line in the New York City with same frequency but little higher voltages and end user customer side it is 100 volts but the transmission voltage was 1000 volts by using a transformer and they use single phase power supply. So they were so happy to have this construction in New York in US because they don't have to have a regular power plants at regular intervals. Okay, they can transmit this power for longer distances because they can step up and step down the voltage levels by using transformer that is possible only with AC power supply that is not possible with the DC power supply. But still some people used to say, yeah, though it is good to light up the bulbs, but what about the motors? Motors can't work. AC supply can't be used to turn the motor. Though he perceived idea he got an idea, but it is not into implementation yet. Now, in 1888, the famous scientist Nikola Tesla, I think you heard of this name, he just got polyphase AC motor patents. He just showed up to the world by using polyphase AC, one can convert AC electricity into mechanical energy. That has now got a big boom for this George Westinghouse. Immediately, George Westinghouse has taken all the patent rights from Tesla. He used Tesla in his industry to promote AC because he has a power supply and application bulbs were of course they were there and now Tesla has powerful AC motor. And that's it. Now to prove to the world at that time DC was so powerful till then, before then DC was so powerful because it is, it is Edison's one. Edison was so powerful. But now there was a fight between George Westinghouse and Edison. So they were, they were promoting, these guys are promoting AC, but Edison was promoting DC. Obviously, it's his own plant. How can I demote his own plant? Now that was termed as war of currents. Anyways, 
In 1891, in Germany, by taking all these concepts, in Germany, they launched three-phase AC transmission line in a demonstration purpose. Around at 175 kilometer, they transmitted, okay, at 8,000 volts as a transmission voltage and the frequency chosen was 40 hertz. See, they were keep on experimenting with this frequency, which frequency to pick up. Okay, they're just experimenting with the frequency. Now, in 1893, George Westinghouse has got a wonderful opportunity to light Chicago World Fair. Okay, the same year, Swami Vivekananda has given world religious speech in Chicago. Okay, same year, same place. They got the opportunity in participating in lighting up this world fair. So for that, George Westinghouse has used two-phase power supply, of course AC, with this 2200 volts transmission and 60 hertz. Now why two-phase? Because in this world fair, obviously, he needed to show the light, lights as well as he needed to show the polyphase AC motors, which can run with AC power supply. So they need multi-phases, that is two phases, he used two phases for lights. He has taken one phase out of it, he has given to lights. Now question comes, why here 60 hertz? Because at that time, Tesla has given idea of 60 hertz, as people are choosing different numbers, low frequencies are good for his motors, not high frequencies, low frequencies are good for his motor. Why? Low frequency means low losses, eddy current losses as well as hysteresis losses, so called iron losses, total together, they will be less if frequency is less. But if frequency is so less, the bulbs used to give a flicker. Okay? So they could have used 40, but Tesla suggested 60 based on a simple logic because one hour has 60 minutes, see here, one minute has 60 seconds, so he said one second 60 cycles, in one second 60 cycle that is 60 hertz, so they landed at 60 hertz generation. So that's how they come up at, they landed at this 60 hertz. Okay, so this 60 hertz can comfortably light up the bulbs and it can turn the motors as well. Now, why if uh, in Chicago, if they are using 60 hertz, what happened in Europe countries? After successful demonstrations of, you know, this AC power supply in Chicago warfare, so people are very curious about this AC power transmission. So everybody would like to take the same. So in European countries, they could have chosen same 60 hertz, but this 60 number is not fitting into their metric system because European system is something different, European units are something different, and US units are something different, okay? Like you can see, yards, kilometers, we'll say in British, but in case of Europe, they'll call it as yards, okay? There are many, many differences in units. So, uh, British units are, metric units are something different. So what is their metric units? Careful here, we are coming to the point. If you see our currency, what is our currency? We have, of course, rupees. We have one rupee, two rupee, and five rupees. Okay, these one, do we have three rupees coin? No, we don't have a three rupees coin. We have one rupee coin, two rupee coin, and five rupee coin. Okay, because one, two, five are the metric numbers, okay? And 10 multiples of this 1, 2, and 5, that is, we have 10 rupees, 20 rupees, and 50 rupees. And similarly, yes, 100 rupees, 200 rupees, and 500 rupees we have right now, isn't it? So, 1, 2, 5 are the metric standard numbers. So, the 60 hertz, what was used in Chicago, is not fitting into the metric standard numbers. So, they chosen 50 hertz. Now you may ask, 
they could have chosen 100 hertz. Why they have chosen 50 hertz? Because I said more frequency means more losses in case of AC motor, more iron losses. So they cannot go for more frequencies. They could have chosen 20 hertz, but less frequency will give a flicker. So they picked up, yes, 50 hertz. Okay. Now, I hope you understand whole story, why we got 50 hertz. Not only this, with this whole story, you will you keep this story in your mind, you will get many more things later on. Uh, like, I'll tell you. See here, two-phase AC system. They were having two-phase AC system in existence, but there are some, some, some systems afterwards, afterwards there are some systems who got three-phase. Three-phase motors were so popular afterwards. Now, to convert this two-phase existing AC to three-phase, at that time itself, Scott, F. Scott has proposed a new transformer connection called Scott connection to convert the two-phase to three-phase. So that these two-phase power supply can be converted to three-phase and it can drive the three-phase induction motor because after his invention of polyphase AC motor, yes, complete two-phase, three-phase polyphase induction motors are popular, okay? So likewise, there are many more hidden concepts. So I strongly recommend you to have this in your mind. So let us have a look at the conclusion. Right now, in the world, we're having, this is a world map with the different frequencies, okay? So 50 hertz, 60 hertz is used, and different voltage levels, 220 volts, and 100 volts or 120 volts is used at different both the frequencies, okay? And this is a world map. So most of the countries are blue, means they're using 220 volts, 50 hertz power supply, okay? And still in New York and in this region, North America, still they're using 60 hertz because they could have changed to 50 hertz, but if you want to, if, if this complete area needs to change to 50 hertz, then all the customers in this area need to throw all their appliances and they need to replace, they need to buy a new appliances. It is very difficult, okay? And yeah, one thing, in European countries, what we discussed, in these countries, in these countries, they go, they go on for 50 hertz at that time, okay? At the time of 1910 and so, but they were still with 120 volts at the time. They are not changed to these 20 volts. They are still with 120 volts, but 50 hertz. So after Second World War, almost all the people are affected. So all the appliances, electrical appliances are gone away. So immediately after that, it was very easy for them to change the voltage level from 120 volts to 220 volts and they stick with 50 hertz. Why 220 volts? Because higher voltages, higher distribution voltages also leads to low transmission voltage losses and low transmission voltage drop as well. Okay, so this is for distribution. I hope all of you understand complete story of this AC from the origin, why AC has taken into consideration and then why 50 hertz has chosen, why 60 hertz has chosen, everything is clear I think. I hope you like the video. Please like the video and share the videos with your friends and do subscribe to our channel for more such kind of videos. Thank you.